Okay, congratulations on getting that new drone. It's a beauty, isn't it? I'm sure you've already taken off in the backyard, looked around a little bit, and now you're just excited about all the great things you're going to do with it. Take it on vacation, you're going to fly it over the beaches in Florida, maybe head to Hawaii, uh, Fort Lauderdale for the sunset. Hey, maybe you're going to go out west and uh, get those epic shots out there. You know you're going to have a great time. It's going to be great using this thing. But at some point, you're going to have to stop and wonder, hmm, do I need to register my drone? Do I need to get a pilot's license? Well, unfortunately, we have to think about those things. So first thing, myth or fact, have you heard this one? As long as the drone is 249 grams or less, hey, you can go wherever you want, do whatever you want. That's a myth. That is not true, but boy, you are going to hear that over and over and over again. Well, you got two things to think about. You got the license requirement, which is based upon the intent of each flight, and the registration requirement, which is based upon the size of the drone, as well as the intent of the flight. Now, the bad news up front is you're going to have to pass an FAA exam no matter what. That's right. To fly a drone in the U.S., you need to pass one of two FAA exams. The question is, which one? The first one is free and easy. The second one, probably going to cost you some money, and it's pretty hard. So let's go find out. Let, let's help you find out which one you need. The default regulation for all drones is going to be something we call Part 107. That's all drones under 55 pounds, so unless you're flying this thing for other reasons, this is going to cover you. There is an exception, and that is covered, referred to as 44809 rules, and that's for limited recreational operations of the drones. So, let's go ahead, check in, and see which ones apply to you. All right, so bear with me a little bit here because this is really important. Congress created an exception for limited recreational operations of drones for purely fun or personal enjoyment. That's the key right there, purely fun and personal enjoyment. Now, they don't really describe that, but they do describe what it isn't. So, when we look at some of the further things the FAA says, compensation or the lack of it is not what determines if a flight was recreational or not. So you got to keep that in mind. Are you flying strictly for the fun of flying? You're enjoying flying? Yes, you may make some videos. You may even post it to YouTube for you, so your family and friends can see it. But you have no intent on making money. You're not doing it for anyone else. You're not doing it for any other reason other than pure enjoyment. Here are some more examples of what non-recreational drone flying is. If you're flying your drone to take a look at your roof to see if your roof has leaves in the gutter or a leak, that's non-recreational. If you're doing it to videotape a house for a real estate company, that's not recreational. If you're doing it to get goodwill with your church, your high school football team, whatever the case may be, that then puts you in the category of non recreational. So that's the key. What is your intent? Is it purely for the fun of flying and sharing that flying with others with no other motivation? Or are you doing it for another reason, for someone else, for something other than the pure enjoyment of flying? That's the key. On the FAA website, they have a little flowchart that will help you uh, make this determination. You go through there, you saw the link before. Are you flying for a business commercial? If you say no, they're going to ask you, uh, are you flying for recreation? And that's where you need to know the difference. So yes, I'm flying for recreation. Does your drone weigh more than 55 pounds? Nope. Then congratulations, you are flying under the recreational exemption. Now let's go the other way. Are you flying for business? And that could be YouTube if your intent is to make some money, promote your product or whatever, then yes, you are flying for a business. Do you deliver packages? Don't know. At least 16? Yes. Okay, then the determination is that you're under flying under Part 107 rules.
All right, with that out of the way, we've kind of done the hard part. Now we need to know what to do. Remember this question? Which one is it, the free and easy or dollars and hard? We can answer that now. The free and easy is if you are flying for recreation. Unfortunately, everything else is going to be under part 107, and that's the hard one. So let's talk about recreational flight. Got to pass the FAA trust exam and follow the 44809 rules. The trust exam is very easy. It's about 15 to 30 minutes of your time. You do it online. There's training, four quizzes intermixed with it. And on the quizzes, you retry until you get the right answer so you can't fail. And it's very good information. The certificate is good for life. And fortunately, the FAA provides a list of providers who will give you that training for free. And the certificate is also free. The other part of that was following the 44809 rules. That means you're only going to fly for recreational purposes. You're going to follow the safety guidelines. You're going to keep your drone within visual line of sight and give way to all other aircraft. Additionally, you're going to fly at or below 400 feet in Class G airspace, which you will learn about. You're going to carry proof of completion of the trust certificate and present it to any law enforcement or FAA official who requests and finally, you're going to have an appropriate registration and markings if required, and you're not going to operate the drone in any manner that endangers the National Aerospace System. Well, we got that taken care of, so let's just cover registration because that's easy. Now we're going back to that 249 gram rule we talked about before. If you're flying for recreation and your drone is under 249 grams, you do not need to register it. For all others, you'll register it at the FAA Drone Zone, and it'll be $5, and it will cover all of the drones you fly recreationally and be good for three years. Well, while we're on registration, let's go ahead and knock out registration if you're covered under Part 107. All drones, regardless of weight, must be individually registered. Same procedure, FAA Drone Zone, and they're $5 each, and each of your drones must be marked externally with your registration number. Okay, so we've taken care of recreational flying and registration for both types. Let's go ahead and move on to what it takes to get your Part 107 license. All right, now the Part 107, it is too uh, lengthy to cover in depth, so I'm just going to cover the highlights, give you some idea. 60 questions, 70% required for passing, administered by an FAA contractor uh, who has over 700 locations across the country, and they charge about $175 to proctor the test, and you get your results immediately. There are six areas on the test. They're going to cover regulations, airspace, weather, loading and performance, operations, and flying at night. It is a very serious test. Here are some sample questions. This one covers uh, performance. Again, performance, you got to know a little bit about this. You're going to hear a lot about charts when you're taking that test. Fortunately, the uh, beginning of the chart kind of has a cheat sheet that can help you through it, but you still need to understand what you're looking at. And then they're going to talk about personalities and how that impacts flying. So if you took a look at those sample questions, found them uh, kind of confusing, not to fear. It's not impossible. You can learn this. Two ways to do it. One is you can do it on your own. The FAA provides practice tests and a free study guide. And you can watch YouTube videos to get more information. The other way is to uh, hire a professional study service company. That's going to cost you some money, but in my experience, you're going to learn quicker and you're probably going to have a better understanding of the material at the end and have more confidence going in and taking the test. For my money, I went with Pilot Institute. If you watch this before Black Friday, they have a pretty good special going on now, uh, but I really enjoyed these guys. Uh, it is a lot of information and they presented in a way where they are teaching you the information. They're not just teaching you how to pass the test, although you will, and they will guarantee that you pass the test or pay for your makeup test. They're so confident um, they can make that promise. And in my experience, it's well worth the money. In my case, 
I went from deciding to purchase my first drone on a Tuesday of one week. Uh, I think I got the drone on Thursday. That's when I decided I probably should get my Part 107 license, so I found Pilot Institute that Thursday and went ahead and did some binge studying Thursday night, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, I scheduled my exam uh, for Tuesday morning. The next Tuesday morning, I went, took the exam. They give you two hours. I took 45 minutes, ended up getting a 98%. And now I'm a proud holder of a FAA Part 107 certificate meaning that I can fly this for fun and profit, and I can post the videos to my YouTube with the intent of gaining audience and, hey, even making a little bit of money. Well, hope you got something out of it. If you've stuck around this long, uh, hopefully you did. And if you would, go ahead and, and like and maybe subscribe to my channel. If not, I wish you the best and uh, hope you got something out of this. All right, take care. As always, I am enjoying retirement.